To clarify, I'm not judging who is right within the confines of the narrative that they made. The Riddler kills a bunch of people and floods a city. I'm analyzing why the narrative looks like this in the first place and what it says about our culture. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's so a little weird that you don't denounce the action. <laughs> I don't know. Maybe I he mean, thinks it doesn't need to be denounced because it's so obviously bad, but I don't know. When you're talking about getting rid of liberal democracy... Why does the narrative look this way and what does it say about our culture? I mean, it says crime is bad. It says right? liberalism good. Yeah. It says institutions are need to be maintained. I mean, when I saw... We had had a conversation about, I think it was might have been Ukraine where we were talking about, or, or maybe communism, maybe Soviet communism, where we were talking about fostering a culture that had respect for law. Mm -hmm. Do you remember this conversation that we had? I yes. think you, you, where did you get that from? What was the study or something you were talking about? What What was the actual thing I said that you're referring well, you to? You said they did like some sort of post mortem, I think, on on Soviet Russia, mm -hmm. and and found that what what you need to foster, you know, a liberal democracy is a respect for law. I remember there was oh some no, it wasn't study a study. It was um, it was the guy who worked as like a field chief. I forget for some government organization in mm -hmm. Moscow during the collapse of the Soviet Union and the transition to Russia. Okay, good. And he and he was talking about how there was a faulty idea that once you had ca like. All you had to do was get the Russians on board with capitalism and even the concept of personal greed that that would then foster like a liberal democracy. And he's like, no, stupid. First of all, all the people in, under communism were greedy. Okay? Yeah. And you're stupid. Human if you beings think they are were. greedy. Yeah. Right. Right. They were all very greedy. And he said all they did was they just translated the corruption under their communist governments to now being corruption under their capitalist government. And right. that really the, what they needed to have was a respect for their institutions and a respect for laws. And, and I think that guy's 100% correct because if you, and it's what we talked about earlier in this video, that if you believe, if you don't believe that you can succeed in a system of laws, then why the fuck would you follow them? It's like what you said. If you, if you think everyone's cheating their taxes, then you're going to cheat on your taxes. Yeah, because you know you don't want to be the chump, you know, holding the bag at the end of the day when everyone else is free riding. Right. So a respect, you put it perfectly, a respect for the law. That's the essential component. Mm -hmm. And I watched the Batman recently after we had that conversation. The whole time I'm watching it, I'm thinking, this movie. That's the point of this narrative is to gain a respect for the law like the whole relationship between the batman and the good cop what's his name i can't remember gordon gordon yeah the whole relationship between the batman and gordon is the fact that there are you know a lot of people in the police department that don't have respect for the law and that gordon is one of the people who does have respect for the law and I mean, even him dealing with Catwoman, he's talking about, you know, we need to have respect for the law. Like the whole thing just seems like, a, you know, people need to feel the inclination to do the right thing. Isn't that a big part of the movie? That is. Yeah. That is. So the, the thing that you're talking about in this, in this other situation with Soviet Russia and whatnot, I mean, that's a good thing that this movie's out there promoting that narrative. But uh, Renegade Cuck here doesn't see that. He's like, no, this movie, sh we need movies that basically try to tear down the institutions <laughs> and don't promote respect for the law, right? They should promote non-respect for the law. I mean, he, we watched another video of his where he's 
basically condoning shoplifting. Like, this guy right. doesn't care about the law. What a terrible, what a terrible situation. What a terrible guy. <laughs> I mean, what the fuck? What, what happened to you that you feel like you can tear down our institutions? I guess he just feels that these institutions are not serving him. Because he's fucking commie. Okay. I mean, that's not an excuse. <laughs> it's not. I'm, it's not an excuse. I'm just, that's an explanation of why that's why he feels that way. Well, I mean, is, is it just that he's a rabid partisan and like the Republican Party's the you know, technically the party of law and order. And he just is like against law and order because it's, he doesn't like Republicans. I mean, it could be that simple. Like he's literally just a contrarian who's being driven by his contrarianism. And right. the facts of any situation are just immaterial. I hate those kind of people because they're just NPCs. They're of literally course. being driven by whatever the other person wants. The Riddler is not right, but the Riddler is also not real. The portrayal of his fight for the downturn. Look, he said the Riddler is not right. Okay, there you go. You got it. Finally. But in first place, and what it says about our culture. The Riddler is not right, but the Riddler is also not real. The portrayal of his fight for the downtrodden perspective as radical, dangerous, terroristic, and motivated only by vengeance and not justice is a choice by the filmmakers. So he's saying that... <laughs> oh my god. This guy has his head so far up the ideology, asshole. He doesn't think a character like the Riddler could be a real character. Yeah. Like, I, I he could have that. said... You know, he could have made the point that, yeah, it's a choice for the movie to make that his character. But he said that, that it's not a real character. Like what does people like that's that's a very real I, that's that's I would say that the Riddler's character the I've been wrong so I want to destroy everything is a is a hundred times more real and more often occurring than the I've been wrong by society let me fix things <laughs> character like of course let me actually build up like positive things I mean you could argue that Leon falls into that camp he really could he I mean he's close he's close. The conclusion of the film that basically serves as a love letter to the good people who reinforce our ultimately good institutions that exist to serve justice is also a choice. These choices do not necessarily have these intentions, but finding authorial intention is not the goal here. These choices are worth thinking about because they reveal cultural biases and presuppositions that existed prior to the creation of the film and outside of the industry of film. So why don't I talk about movies on my channel that much anymore? Part of the reason is that I find discussing politics more urgent right now. We still need art and we still need art criticism, but other things have captured my interest and my sense of urgency. Pretty sure there are other people with better, hotter pop culture takes anyway. I'm passionate about politics, but only in the sense that that is life. I'm passionate about film because I enjoy watching movies. I enjoy thinking about movies. I enjoy analyzing movies. It's fun. But making the thing that I think is fun also my job compromises the fun if the space in which I do my job is surrounded by toxicity. My political video... That, that's us, Sitch, in case you didn't know. You're the toxic one. ...also get reactions from people Thank opposing you. politics, but those meltdown reactions at least feel relative to the incendiary nature of the subject matter. Pop culture meltdowns from the chud space are sad in... <laughs> <laughs> pop culture There's us. Meltdowns we're we're from pop the culture meltdown from the chud space. So no, I think we just... I think we... I just stumbled upon mm -hmm. the problem here. Uh oh, what's the problem? It looks like we have someone who's jealous of the critical drinker. <laughs> oh, okay. It looks like uh, you're probably the, right. The yeah. Chud Space has taken over movie analysis. I think probably because they're doing a better job. <laughs> yeah. Yes. They're not forcing every single movie into the communist, anti communist, le or the capitalist, anti capitalist lens.
in a way that feels different. And I can't ignore it either because I can't help but interact with the space I occupy. It ends up hurting my enjoyment of film, and I would love to get that feeling back. I'm gonna try to get back into watching movies, but on my own instead of in public or on my YouTube channel. I don't regret making this video, it was very cathartic. I originally started writing this in a more melancholy mood, and it was about twice as long too, but in the end, I was like, yeah, I think I'll watch and analyze movies on my own and not in public, and I'll get that magic back again. For myself, just for myself. Maybe the occasional video about Star Trek purely as a palate cleanser, but that's it. At least once a week, someone comments under one of my videos with, Oh, pfft, remember when this channel was about movies? <laughs> yeah, I do. But I'm not a channel. I'm a person. Jeez, this guy used to do, do movie... that anymore. This guy used to do primarily movie content? This is like totally you... news to me. You didn't know that? No. I used to love this guy's movies reviews. What? Yeah. Oh he, my god. He didn't have all he didn't have all the politics in. Yeah, he used to, wow. I think he even worked for Channel Awesome at one time. Wow, okay. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, I've been watching this guy's videos for like years, to be honest with you. He did he used to do a system where you would donate $30 to his Patreon and you'd mm -hmm. select a movie and he would do a breakdown of that movie. Which, Interesting. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm assuming that he could just, you know, take, do whichever movies. I'm assuming more people offered him, offered him the $30 and he could actually do the movie reviews of. So he's kind of selecting anyway. Right. But I admired his grift, to be honest with you. I thought it was a good grift. <laughs> but I guess that's what maybe what got him down. He should have just said, you know, I'll do, you know, a movie review for 500 and maybe he'd be in a different situation. Right. I don't know. Maybe. Or maybe, I mean, in that situation, you kind of do become beholden to the guy who. I mean, I can imagine it's probably demoralizing. Someone pays you 30 bucks to do a movie review and you spend all this time doing it, which is an incredibly good value just to be able to do a movie review. And then, like, they hate it. They're like, oh, my God, this is terrible. <laughs> you're like, dude, you paid 30 bucks for this and you're going to, like, blow up my email. Right. Complaining. You wanted, you asked for my analysis, not for me to articulate your analysis. So that could suck. But, yeah, no, I mean, look, he's got 635 videos, so he's got videos on a lot of different stuff. But maybe okay. he's just got creator burnout. Mm -hmm. What'd you find? Yeah, that definitely happened.